Chapters 1 through 5 of the Book of Deuteronomy from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Ferrar Fenton. The Book of Deuteronomy, Chapters 1 through 5. Chapter 1. The following are the speeches which Moses addressed to all the children of Israel before the passage over the Jordan in the desert, extending from Saf, between Paran and Thophel and Laban and Katsroth and Yab. It was during the fortieth year in the eleventh month, upon the first of the month, Moses related to the children of Israel all that the ever-living had commanded him for them. After he had defeated Sihon, king of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon, and Og, king of Bashan, who lived at Ashtaroth in Edarai, on this side of the ford of the Jordan, in the land of Moab, Moses began to publish the law, and said, our ever-living god spoke to us in horeb saying you have remained long enough on this mountain turn and march and proceed with all your camps to the highlands of the amorites and all their neighbors in the dry lands of the hills and thence to the plains and desert along the shore of the sea of the land of canaan and from lebanon as far as the great river freight attend i have opened the country to you go and seize the land which the ever-living promised to give to your fathers to abraham to isaac and to jacob and give it to them and to their posterity after them but i told you all at that time i myself could not support you alone and now your ever-living god has increased you and see you are to-day like the stars of the sky in number and the ever-living the god of your fathers will add to you beyond this a thousand times and will bless you as he promised how can i alone bear your troubling and carry your contentions go choose for yourselves skillful clear-sighted and educated men to control you and i will appoint them your chiefs when you answered me what you have said is good what you have said do it i therefore chose as the chiefs of your tribes skilful and educated men and gave them to you as your chiefs colonels of regiments and captains of companies and captains of fifties and captains of tens with magistrates for your tribes i also ordered your judges at that time saying listen between your brothers and decide just judgments between a man and his brother and the foreigners among you do not regard social station in deciding whether low or high listen not in fear of the station of a man for justice belongs to god himself but any matter that is too difficult for you bring to me and i will hear it i instructed you also at that time as to what things you ought to do then we marched from horeb and proceeded through all that great and terrible desert which you saw on the way to the hills of the amorites when our ever-living god commanded us to advance to kadesh barnea where i said you are now arrived at the hills of the amorites which our ever-living god has given us look your ever-living god has provided the country before you to possess go up seize it as the ever-living god of your fathers commands you fear not nor be terrified but all of you approached me asking to send men before you to examine the country and to report to you about the road by which you could go up to it and about the cities that you were to go to and the request seemed good in my opinion and i appointed twelve princes one from each tribe and they turned and went up to the hills and descended to the vale of eshcol and slandered it but they took into their hands some of the produce of the country and came back to us and reported the matter saying it is a beautiful country that our ever-living god has given us but you were not willing to go up and rebelled against the order of your ever-living god and murmured in your tents and exclaimed because the ever-living hated us he brought us out of the land of the mitzrayim and would give us into the hands of the amorites to destroy us alas for our advance our brothers have depressed our hearts by saying they are a people finer and taller than us their cities are large and fortified up to the skies and we also saw the sons of anak there but i replied to you be not terrified nor fear them 
your ever-living god who goes before you he will fight for you in the way he did in your sight among the mitzrayim and in the desert where you saw how the ever-living carried you as a woman carries her child along all the way that you went until he brought you to this spot but on that occasion you were not relying upon your ever-living god who marched before you in the journey to choose your encampments as a fire at night to show the way you should go and as a cloud by day and the ever-living heard the sound of your words and was angry and swore saying this vile generation shall never see the beautiful land which i promised to give to their fathers only Caleb the son of jephunneh shall see it and i will give to him and his sons the country which he travelled through for he went up confidently following the ever-living the ever-living was also angry with me on account of you and said you shall not go there joshua the son of nun your lieutenant shall go encourage him for he shall put israel into possession but your infants whom you said would be captured and your sons who today know neither good nor evil they shall go there and i will give it to them and they shall possess it but you turn back and march to the desert towards the sea of suf then you were grieved and replied we have sinned against the ever-living we will now go up and conquer according to all that the ever-living god commanded and each one of you put on arms and went up to the hill but the ever-living said to me order them go not up and fight not for i am not with you therefore you will fly before your enemies so i spoke to you but you would not hear and you rebelled against the order of the ever-living and were insolent and went up to the hill and the amorites who occupied the hill advanced against you and drove you like bees would do and routed you like a tempest to the valley so you returned and wept before the ever-living but the ever-living would not hear your voice nor listened consequently you were detained at kadesh for many days you remained there a long time chapter two until you turned back and marched to the desert towards the sea of suf as the ever-living commanded me and wandered about the hills of seir a long time at last the ever-living said to me you have wandered about this hill enough turn to the north and command the people saying to them pass over the borders of your brothers the sons of esau who dwell in seir but they will be afraid of you so carefully guard yourselves and injure them not for i will not give you a foot's space of their country because i have given mount seir to esau as a possession you must buy food from them with money and eat it and also purchase water from them for money and drink it for your ever-living god has blessed you in every work of your hand whilst you travelled this great desert these forty years your ever-living god has been with you and you have wanted for nothing you consequently passed by your brothers the sons of esau who occupy seir by the road of the arabah to aeloth and at zion gaber where you turned off and traversed the road of the desert of moab there the ever-living said to me do not trouble moab but keep yourselves from fighting turn for i have not granted you this country because i have given ar to the sons of lot as a possession then you arose and passed the vale of yared and at the passage of the vale of yared including the period of the march from kadesh barnea until the time you crossed the vale of yared was thirty-eight years until all the generation of fighting men belonging to the camp were dead as the ever-living threatened them for the hand of the ever-living was against them to destroy them out of the camp until they perished and when all the fighting men had died from among the people then the ever-living spoke to me and said now cross over today the boundaries of moab at ar but when you approach the sons of ammon neither distress nor hurt them for i will not give the country of the sons of ammon to you to possess for i have given it to the sons of lot as a possession rise march and cross the river arnon see i have given you sihon king of heshbon the amorite and his country to break assail and defeat it in war i have broken him this day putting the dread and fear of you upon the face of the nations under every sky who may hear the reports about you they tremble and faint before you 
then i sent ambassadors from the desert of the east to sihon king of heshbon with proposals of peace and said i wish to pass across your country by the king's highway i will not march many days or deviate you shall sell food for money and i will eat it and pay money for the water you give and i drink it i only wish to pass over on my feet do to me as the sons of esau did who dwell in seir and the moabites who inhabit are until i have crossed the jordan to the land which our ever-living god has given us but sihon king of heshbon was not willing you should cross over him for your ever-living god had stupefied his mind and emboldened his heart that by it he might give him into your hand as he has now done the ever-living god also said see i have begun to give up sihon and his country before you seize it take his land for a possession then sihon advanced to meet us he and all his force to fight at jahaz but our ever-living god delivered him to us and struck him and his son and all his forces and at that time we captured all his towns and devoted all his cities nor allowed the men women or children to escape beside the cattle we seized for ourselves and the plunder of the cities which we captured from aroer on the banks of the arnon and the towns in the valley and as far as gilad there was not a city that was too strong for us our ever-living god delivered the whole to our approach the whole extent of the country of the ammonites all along the vale of jabbok with the towns of the highlands and all that our ever-living god commanded chapter three then we turned and went up towards bashan and og king of bashan advanced to meet us with all his forces to fight at adarai then the ever-living said to me fear him not for i have given him into your power with all his forces and his country and you shall do to him as you did to sihon king of the amorites who lived in heshbon so our ever-living god also subjected to us og king of bashan and all his forces until not a remnant remained to him we also captured all his towns in the same campaign there was not a city we did not take from the sixty towns in the district of argob to the capital of og in bashan all which towns were fortified with high walls gates and bars beside a great many towns of the perizzites we devoted them as we did to sihon king of heshbon we devoted every city men women and children and all the cattle and plunder of those towns we seized for ourselves we thus took in the same campaign their country from the possession of the two kings of the amorites which are this side of the jordan extending from the vale of arnon to the hill of hermon all the towns of the uplands and all gilad and all bashan to salka and adorai towns of the dominions of og in bashan these countries you conquered in that campaign extending from aroer which is on the river arnon and the half of mount gilad was given to the reubenites and gadites but the remainder of gilad and all bashan with the dominions of og i gave to the half tribe of manasseh all the plain of argob and all bashan which is called the land of rephaim yair the son of manasseh took all the district of argob as far as the borders of the geshurites and the Machathites, and he called them after his own name yair's towns but i gave gilad to machir to the reubenites and gadites i also gave a part of gilad to the middle of the vale of arnon the valley as a boundary as far as jabbok with its valley to the border of the ammonites and the plain of the jordan as a boundary from kinneroth as far as the sea of the plain the dead sea down to the hillfoot of pisgah from the east but i commanded you at that time saying your ever-living god has given you this country to possess but you must march fully equipped in the front of your brothers the children of israel with all your forces however the women and children and cattle for i know you have many cattle may remain in the cities which i have given you until the ever-living has settled your brothers like yourselves and they are also in possession of the country which their ever-living god will give to them beyond the jordan then you may each return i also commanded joshua at that time saying your eyes have seen all that your ever-living god has done to these two kings 
the ever-living will do the same to all the kingdoms which are over there fear them not for your ever-living god will fight for you and at that time i implored the ever-living saying almighty lord you have now begun to show to your servant your grandeur and your strong hand what power in heaven or on earth can do as you have done with your might let me i pray go over and see this beautiful country that is beyond the jordan those beautiful hills and lebanon but the ever-living was angry with me because of you and would not listen to me and the ever-living said to me let this be enough for you continue not to speak to me again about this matter go up to the top of pisgah and carry your eyes westward and northward and southward and eastward and see it with your eyes for you shall not pass over this river jordan therefore command joshua and encourage and strengthen him for he shall go over before the people and he shall conquer for them the country that you will survey we were then staying in the valley near beth peor chapter four consequently now israel listen to the constitutions and decrees which i will teach you to practice that you may live and go and possess the country which the ever-living god of your fathers will give you you shall not add to the matter that i command you nor shall you detract from it but keep the commands of your ever-living god as i have commanded you your eyes saw what the ever-living did because of baal peor how the ever-living destroyed every man who went after baal peor among you but you who kept fast to your ever-living god are all of you alive today. attend to me as i teach you the constitutions and decrees which the ever-living my god commands you to practice when you arrive in the country which you are going to possess and guard them and practice them for they will make you wise and intelligent in the eyes of the peoples who hear of all these constitutions who will say this is a wise and intelligent people this great nation for what nation is so great as to possess gods in its breast as our ever-living god is to us in all we ask of him and what nation is so great possessing institutions and decrees like these laws that i put before you today only guard yourselves and guard your lives carefully from forgetting the events that your eyes have seen and from turning your heart away all the days of your life and teach them to your children and to your children's children upon the day when you stood before your ever-living god at horeb when the ever-living commanded me collect the people to me and i will let them hear what they must learn so that they may fear me all the time they live on the earth and teach their children so you approached and stood below the hill whilst the hill burned with fire up to the heart of the skies with darkness cloud and gloom there the ever-living spoke to you from the midst of the fire you heard a voice speaking to you but no image appearing a voice alone and it informed you of the covenant which he commanded you to practice the ten commandments and wrote them upon two tables of stone but to me the ever-living ordered at that time to teach you the constitutions and decrees which you were to practice in the land into which you would pass to possess it therefore you must guard your minds very carefully for you did not see any shape on the day the ever-living spoke with you in horeb from the midst of the fire from wickedly making for yourselves a carved shape any image or model of man or woman or form of any beast that is upon the earth form of any bird which flies in the sky form of any reptile on the ground form of any fish that is in the waters lower than the earth or if you raise your eyes heavenward and see the sun or the moon or the stars all the host of the skies and bow to and worship them and serve those which your ever-living god has apportioned to all the nations under all the skies for the ever-living selected you and brought you from the iron works of the mizraim to be a people for himself as you are today but the ever-living was angry with me over your affairs and swore to prevent me crossing the jordan and to prevent me arriving at the beautiful country which your ever-living god has given to you to possess for i must die in this country i may not pass over the jordan but you will pass over and possess that beautiful land 
guard yourselves from forgetting the covenant of your ever-living god which he contracted with you for fear you should make for yourselves a carved image contrary to the command of your ever-living god for your ever-living god is a consuming fire he is a jealous god when you have begotten children and children's children and are in the country and have corrupted yourselves and make carved images and do evil in the eyes of your ever-living god provoking him i call to witness today the heavens and the earth to witness to you that perishing you shall perish quickly from off the land which you pass over the jordan to possess your time shall not be prolonged in it but you shall certainly waste away and the ever-living will scatter you among the nations and your remnant shall die as a number among the nations where the ever-living has driven you and you shall there serve gods made by human hands of wood and stone who cannot see or hear or eat or breathe but if you should from there entreat your ever-living god and decide to seek him with all your heart and with all your soul strengthen yourselves and encourage yourselves with all these events after long periods and return to your ever-living god and listen to his voice for your ever-living god is a merciful god he will not desert you and will not turn from you and will not forget the covenant with your fathers which he swore to them therefore search now the former times that were before you from the time when god constructed man upon the earth and from one extreme of the heavens to the other extreme of the heavens has there ever been such a great event as this or has there been heard its like a people who heard the voice of god speaking from amid the fire as you heard it and lived or that god attempted to go and take for himself one nation from the breast of another nation with trials and miracles and portents and war and with a strong hand and a directing arm and great manifestations such as all those your ever-living god has made in your sight upon the mitzrayim for you then see and learn that the ever-living is god and accept him none from the heavens you have heard his voice when he taught you and upon earth you have seen his great fire and heard his commands from the midst of the fire because he loved your fathers and chose their race after them and brought you by his great might to his presence from among the mitzrayim and will drive great and more powerful nations than you before your face to bring you to to give you their country as a possession as at this day therefore learn to-day and fix it in your heart that the ever-living he is god in heaven and upon the earth and except him there is no other so keep his institutions and his commandments which i commanded you to-day that you may prosper and your children after you and then your days will be long upon the land which your ever-living god will give to you for all time chapter five moses again assembled all israel and said to them listen israel to the constitutions and decrees which i proclaim in your hearing to-day both to learn them and preserve them by practising our ever-living god contracted a covenant with us in horeb not with our fathers did the ever-living contract that covenant but with us ourselves those in this place all of us alive to-day the ever-living spoke face to face with you at the hill from the midst of the fire i stood between the ever-living and you at that time to report to you the dictation of the ever-living for you were afraid at the presence of the fire and could not ascend to him and he said one i am your ever-living god who brought you out of the land of egypt from the house of bondage you shall have no other gods in my place two you shall not make for yourselves an image any likeness of what is in the heavens above or what is on the earth beneath or what is in the waters lower than the land you shall not bow down to them nor serve them for i your ever-living god am a jealous god punishing the sins of the parents upon their children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but i show mercy to thousands of generations of those who love me and keep my commandments three you shall not take the name of your ever-living god in vain for the ever-living will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain four regard the sabbath day to keep it holy as the ever-living god commanded you you may labor six days and do all your business but the seventh day is a rest to your ever-living god 
you shall not do any business upon it you or your son or your daughter or your servant or your handmaid or your ox or your ass or any of your cattle or your hired man who may be in your house because your workmen and your maidservant shall rest like yourself remember also that you were slaves in the land of the mitzraim but your ever-living god brought you out from there with a strong hand and a directing arm therefore your ever-living god commanded you to make the day of rest five honor your father and your mother as your ever-living god commanded you so that your days may be lengthened and that you may prosper upon the land which your ever-living god gives to you six you shall not murder seven you shall not fornicate eight you shall not steal nine you shall not bring up false evidence against your neighbor ten you shall not covet your neighbor's wife you shall not long for your neighbor's farm or his slave or his handmaid his ox or his ass or anything that is your neighbor's the ever-living dictated these commands to the whole assembly of you from the midst of the fire of the cloud and of the gloom a great voice and did not desist there but wrote them upon two tables of stone and gave them to me but when you heard the voice from the midst of the darkness and the mountain burning with fire then all the chiefs of your tribes and your nobles approached to me and said now we have seen our ever-living god his majesty and his greatness and have heard his voice his voice from the midst of the fire to-day we have seen that god can speak with mankind and lives therefore now why should we die for this great fire will consume us if we ourselves remain longer to hear the voice of our ever-living god we shall die for who is there of any race who has heard the voice of the living god speaking from the midst of the fire like us and has lived go yourself near and listen to all that our ever-living god says and then report to us all that our ever-living god dictates to you and we will listen to it and do it and the ever-living heard the voice of your speeches when you spoke to me and the ever-living said to me i have heard the voice of this people speaking to you all they have said is beautiful what would i give if there were such a heart in them to attend to me and to keep all my commands for all time then there would be prosperity to them and to all their children for ever go tell them to return to their tents but you stay here and i will dictate to you all my commands and the constitutions and decrees which you must teach them to practice in the country which i will give them to possess therefore you must practice them as your ever-living god commanded you you shall not turn away to the right or the left you shall walk in every way as your ever-living god commanded you so that you may live and prosper and lengthen your days in the country which you shall possess the end of chapters one through five of the book of deuteronomy recording by mark penfold